Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I've got a couple requests to go ahead and for people to show or to have me show them um, kind of how I set up a new song. So we'll go ahead and here we go. So here is a Glorious Day from Passion. Great song. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's give you a little bit of four. a part of it. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first. make it so that we can figure out exactly where we are in the song once all of these do not transfer over. Uh, basically, when you have a new song come in from multi-tracks, it has all of the um, the live um, markers inputted so that way you can cut from one spot to the song to the next. Uh, I actually use MIDI clips to do the exact same thing so that way once I put it in a session, uh, it'll be easy to follow along with the song edit, etc. So I'm going to do a quick version of this. Uh, each section, you hit Command Shift M, and when you hit Command Shift M, you can name it. So we'll name it Intro. Um, in the interest of time, I don't want this to take forever, you can space these however you want. You can color them however you like. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do them all one color for right now, just in the interest of time, because I just want you to be able to see exactly how this is done, not necessarily see how I do it. Um, but just so you know, normally I make all the choruses one color, all the verses one color, uh, just to make it easier. Um, and to change the color, you just click right here, and then you change it. So for instance, that would make it yellow. Oh, bad example. That would make it blue. Anyway, free chorus. Now, once you've got one, you can just copy and paste. You can also drop this down to a smaller track. Uh, it's really quick and easy to work with that way. Chorus, Command Shift M, and then Click down here again, chorus, and once you've got one done of everything, you can just copy and paste all the way through. Interlude is new, so we'll label that. Um, verse 3. Pre-chorus is already here, just to go ahead and go through all this and chorus. Chorus again, trim it, interlude again. Now remember you can also put these in and then rename them after the fact because once you create a new clip, um, they're a new thing. So like if you change, if you put breakdown, for instance, by copying the interlude, um, it's not going to hurt anything to go ahead and just copy the same thing over and over again and just change the names. So then this becomes bridge. Bridge again, back to chorus, chorus. Now, I even if there's two in a row, I always put both of them. The reason is because you're repeating the chorus, so maybe um, when you go back and redo it, you only want one chorus. You don't necessarily want two. So um, we'll just kind of be sensitive to that whole thing. Now here's the outro. and the ending. Sorry, my OCD is kicking in. I have to actually put a capital O on the outro and ending. But for some reason, it never really makes it exactly the same length, but that's all right. Uh, like when you go to the end of the song, I, I don't know why that is. It doesn't just automatically um, go to that, but no big deal. Now, I'm going to disappear from you for a second. I'm going to go back through and recolor everything so it looks a little neater. Um, I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I'm back. So as you can see here, it's really visually simple to find all the different sections of the song because they're labeled uh, like colors. Let me go ahead and fix this to make it all the same length. Next thing we're going to do is set a master temp for the song. Um, the importance of this is that if you're setting a master temp, the tempo for the entire song needs to be set when you drop it in an arrangement view. Otherwise, you will have a situation where the song doesn't line up with the grid, so you won't be able to put your um, all your markers in the correct spot if you choose to do that so you can change directions during a live service. So we're going to go ahead and do that by creating a new audio track instead of a MIDI clip. Um, 
We're going to record a little bit of audio. First thing you're going to have to do is change to some sort of audio device. I'm using the built-in mic. You can go ahead and start recording at the end of the song, after the song is over, because uh, you don't need this audio. This is just to record dead air. So uh, we'll go ahead and hit record. There we go. So we recorded a little bit of audio. So let's go through. Um, the, what we do with this is we actually go through the entire song. Um, and we, there we go. We consolidate, uh, which is basically like creating an entire single track from one tiny little audio snippet. So that's done by holding Command and then J. Um, what that does is it just makes blank or just dead air the entire time. So there's no output audio done for this. And honestly, normally I don't put an output on the audio. Um, this is really more of a programming kind of deal. Um, so I always go just a little bit longer than the song, just in case any track has kind of snuck by that was a little bit longer. Uh, normally there isn't because this is actually when the clips end, but I don't know. It's kind of part of my OCD as well. Uh, double click here. Now, um, as you can see, it automatically makes this tempo the same as this tempo. The reason for that um, is this is the current session it's in, so it automatically tells it, hey, it recorded at 110 BPM because that's what it was working at. So the only thing that we have to do from here um, is to go ahead and change this from slave to master. So that means that every single time this audio is dropped in any session, it automatically becomes the master clock for that entire session. Um, which means it's going to change this tempo up here. You'll see a little asterisk or a little red dot in the corner, and it'll automatically make that, that tempo. Which, it doesn't really matter for this one because it's the same tempo because it's the same session. So, the uh, last thing I do with this is Command-R, change the name to Master Tempo, and the track name to Tempo. So that way when you drag it in, um, you don't ever... Oop, accidentally created a new track instead of renaming. Uh, you don't necessarily, uh, all I want this to say is tempo, so that way I know when I'm putting the tracks in order or whatever, um, where this is, all the stuff to the top doesn't actually play through. So, um, and I'll explain why I do the order that I do here in a moment. This is, I'm, I call it order, which is the actual order of the song. I make it first. So I do order, then tempo. The next thing we're going to do is the Ableton uh, track, the guide track for um, Pro Presenter to actually go through slides. That'll be another track. I'll go ahead and make the track so you can kind of see what I mean. So I'm going to insert MIDI track, two of them. Um, and then we'll do uh, Command R slides and then Command R lighting. And we'll go through this on another video, but this is the order that I put them in. Um, and I'll explain the next steps on the next video. So, um, Stay tuned and we'll get to the next video here in just a minute.